Hey, thanks so much for joining us for another episode of the Tree of Life Church podcast. It's our prayer that these messages help connect you to the life, love, and power of Jesus. We have a lot going on I want to share today. We're kicking off a new series um, called uh, Go. We typically call it Go. We added the D a little bit later on. And basically, it's the time that we spend in February to look at the G standing for generosity. And so here's what uh, we as a church were able to do in line with God's plan and purpose for us through your obedience and generosity, because that's how it works, right? He, he puts vision and then he brings provision, amen? And he does it through people. And, it, and so we're grateful to partner with you to be a tree of life to a lost and hurting world. And I wanna bring some of that to you today. Of course, next week, as I already mentioned, is our opportunity. And you'll come back and hear some things that I feel like God's put in our heart as a church that we're gonna be doing. Some things you'll hear that we've been believing God for and praying for for a while. We're still standing there. Some things are specific for now. I feel we're taking these next steps. And then the final installment of the series would be the third Sunday, which would be D for destiny. And so uh, I'll share some vision on who we are. And so uh, again, if this is home or you're looking for a home, this is a great time to come and be a part. Uh, but I want to start today as we're going to be talking about generosity. But I, I want you to know like the mission. So we have vision we'll share on the third week. But there's a mission that the scripture um, very clearly lays out for every believer and every church. And it's called the great commission, right? The great commandment, a lot of people would say. This is what is said to the church, to believers. This is who you are to be. This is why you're on the planet. This is why you're here to make a difference. And so let me quickly share that with you, and then we'll give you a little bit of the strategy to it that'll set us up for the generosity. But Mark 16, 15 through 18 says this, and he said to them, this is Jesus speaking, go into all the world, say all Go into all the world. Go into all of your world, and let's go into all the world as God leads us, and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who go into all the world and do what I'm commanding to do. Um, In my name, they'll cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen and amen, right? But that's a mission. We're commissioned. We're charged to go do that. Those things happen when we're on mission, amen? Doing the things that God's asked us to do individually and as a church. And know this, that God brings us together corporately, collectively, because we can do more together than we can our individual selves, amen? Some of you, some of us may not be able to go into all the world. I believe it's meaning also all your world, but you can through your prayers, amen, through your giving. You'll see that soon on the screen. And so we can come together and fulfill those things. Now, having said that, there's also a strategy then that comes in Acts 1.8. He not only gives us the mission, he gives us the power to fulfill the strategy he lays out. And so let's take a look. Acts 1.8, Jesus has told his disciples to gather together in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, which is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And so in this moment, the Holy Spirit is poured out, and here's what it says in verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So he gives you power to do the things we just read. Because in your own ability, you don't heal anybody. But the power of the Holy Spirit through you can, amen? Amen. And the other thing. So he's giving you power to fulfill the commission, not just so you can say, hey, look what I got. So you can be on mission, right? Okay, so Holy Spirit uh, has come upon you, and then you shall be my witnesses, in, witnesses to me in Jerusalem, your local area where you live, uh, all Judea, Samaria, your region, your nation, if you will, and the ends of the earth. So he gives us the power to fulfill the Great Commission, and, and he says, here's how you're going to do that. And so that's what we believe is the mandate on the church, as a believer and as a church. And so what we endeavor to do is follow the Word of God in that, and that is all possible through people gathering together and giving of themselves generously in so many ways. By no means do I want this to come across as a money or finance message. That is a part of generosity, but not generosity in its entirety. And because I I hear this all the time, are you one of those prosperity preachers? And and I'm like, I'm one of those generosity preachers (laughs) because the generous will prosper, (laughs) right? Amen. And then I hear this all the time, are you one of those those health and wealth uh, preachers? And I'm like, as opposed to sick and broke? Because I just, I'm not, I can do that. But here's what I know, the generous will be blessed. That's the way God set it up, amen? amen. And so I wanna share some things with you, what we were able to do. Just, it's very, it's just a little bit. 
so actually when we're putting this together, it's nearly impossible, it seems like, because there's so much that you do around the world. You're so generous with time. It's hard to bring it here uh, for an update. So we have just a, a quick one for you, and we'll do more throughout the year, of course, for this year. Um, but as we started this year, I really felt in my heart, my, rose up in my heart, my spirit, the word threshold. And if you've been here for a while, you remember January of last year, and then we prayed through that a bit. And I felt like God was asking us to take another step, another step across the threshold, a, a little deeper, right? Ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, and we use that scripture, that vision there, and I feel like in 2023, we took another step across the threshold and went a little deeper, and so uh, what you'll see is some updates, some highlights from that. Now, putting all this information together and editing and all that happens uh, because of the the, the time that it takes, and then more information you're collecting and comes in, and so I'm going to give you some verbally, but you'll find some here on the, on the video, so let's take a look on the screen. Tree of Life exists to connect all people to the life, love, and power of Jesus. In 2023, that started right here within our church. God gave me one word, and the word was threshold. There's a threshold. A threshold is not meant, we see it sometimes, a threshold as a boundary. This is okay, I'm just gonna explain a few things that kind of been rolling on my heart, just giving us some vision. So a threshold we see sometimes as a boundary. Don't go beyond that, but it's really a beginning in the things of God. And there's a threshold, I believe, that we as a church have entered into in 2023. And this may be weird to you or whatever, but just bear with me. And I believe that it's time for us to take another step, stepping beyond that threshold. Let me say it this way. It's time for us to release what we've been receiving. Come on, somebody. I have this sense within me as a church that we're stepping into a place of stepping over the next threshold, if you will, and releasing in a greater measure all the amazing things we've been receiving from God. We believe that everything starts with prayer, and we saw over 1,400 people come to First Fruits prayer meetings, setting us up for an amazing year. 600 people going through married ministries, 400 ladies getting their lives changed at women's events, 100 summer camp students, Tree Student Ministries attendance more than doubling, and over 11,000 kids in Tree Kids, ECM, and elementary. But it doesn't stop there. We believe in affecting not only our church, but the entire region. We hosted multiple conferences for churches and the Gerald Brooks School of Leadership. Tree of Life staff and volunteers ministered at Laurel Ridge Mental Health Facility and saw 116 salvations and 258 rededications. You showed up in a big way at outreach opportunities like Night to Shine with 150 volunteers making sure that 47 participants had the night of their life and at the Special Olympics Regional and State Cycling Competitions. On serve day, there were 130 volunteers distributing and delivering food, essential household items, and praying for our community. Not to mention the monthly food distributions and food delivery, our support of the Family Life Center, and our Christmas serve day and coat drive, where 155 coats and 400 gifts were given. We endeavor to further the kingdom of God across the earth. Our online streaming was viewed in countries around the world with over 80,000 views and 26,000 hours watched. We put our resources to work in Mexico, supporting our sister church, Arbo de Vida. In Vietnam, Cuba, India, Pakistan, Turkey, Ukraine, and the newly founded Tree of Life Nepal. And most important of all, we saw over 65,000 people give their lives to the Lord. 2,000 at Tree of Life, Zoom outreach to Pakistan, 116 at Wall Ridge, and 62,000 in the crusade in Pakistan. All of this is possible because of your faithfulness in prayer and your generosity in giving. Amen, amen. Can we just give glory to God for just a minute? Let's just thank God for the opportunity, what he's done. Amen. Amen. God is a good and faithful God, and God is a generous God. And in no way do I want anyone, and honestly, I mean, I see that, and I'm very proud of that, and in the, in the, in the, hopefully the right sense, but in no way is this something that we've accomplished. This is only in and through God. Amen? So he gets the glory. He gets the honor. He is worthy of it all. And so, but we understand this principle of generosity in the scripture, it is a reflection of our God because our God's a generous God, amen? 
And so for walking out and living out the commission and following the strategies and the power of and all doing our part, there's, there's nothing that cannot be accomplished. And so, I, as I said, you, some of the numbers were, were uh, verbally, uh, the, the video was shot earlier, and then we had some more numbers come in, and those, God sorts all that out anyways. Here's what I know. People are getting saved, and that's what matters. Amen. Ultimately, we're here to reach the lost at all costs. And so we've seen God do some amazing things, but he does it through the faithfulness and obedience of his people. And so it's not a message today on tithing or anything of that sort, but you know, we're able to do that because of the tithes and offerings that come in. And so that enables the church. That's the way God set it up, why he set it up that way. And there's blessings for you that come or are a part of that, whether it be giving of your resource, of your time, of your talent. God will use anything you give him, amen? You understand that? And then we all come together corporately. Uh, just to give you a few other things, just we... Have, uh, you saw uh, already some of the, these were last year's updates. We already know from the night to shine that we far exceeded uh, the, meeting a need, a greater need, but also the volunteers, et cetera. And so I really feel like this is just we're going uh, to another depth again this year. But I just want to rem uh, remind you guys of obviously the most important thing is that salvation number that you saw. Uh, that's why we're here is to make a difference and rescue people from hell and send them to heaven. Amen. However you want to say that. Depopulate hell and populate heaven. Um, but we've ministered to so many families and so many people in need. I want you to understand that we do as much as we can here because I believe the light that shines the farthest shines the brightest at home. Amen. And so, but from here, it goes out from here around our nation our community and around the world, our community nation around the world. And a couple other things. For those of you that frequent the coffee shop and cafe, I think this is just really fun. Um, a lot of you do. I want you to know that in 2023 that you spent $1,002, no, what? $102,588. Yeah. You guys are eaters. Come on, man. So I just, I want to say, let's go to the next level of eating, right? And coffee. And, uh, um, <laughs> but that's not just product, if you will, and it's before expense. But, um, you know, people give donation. That, people can give donations that they do. They, they'll come and they'll give like a $5 cup of coffee. They'll give a $20 and say, you know, keep the change or whatever. And, and so those are the people that really love Jesus. But anyways, and then, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. All of it matters. And uh, uh, like this last Sunday, all the, all the monies went to Night to Shine and uh, somebody came and ordered food from the cafe, and they gave an extra $900. And so, amen, that's just like, and that, it doesn't matter who it is, I have no idea, but God knows, right? And God loves a generous life. And so we see that all the time, and it happens all the time. Um, so thank you for that. And uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, one other story on that, and then I have one more video I need to show you, and then we'll move on. Um, and there's a, there's a couple that's here uh, every Sunday, first service, and uh, I know where they sit, and, and I went and talked to them one Sunday. They both had coffees, cups from the coffee shop. And I said, well, what's your go-to drink? What do you like? And they said, um, it's just black, black coffee. I'm like, but you got it in the coffee shop? They're like, yeah. And I got, well, we got the free coffee. And they said, yeah, but if we do the free coffee, the monies don't go to missions. And so every week they go, you know, get a black coffee from the coffee shop so their monies can all go to missions. And I thought, all of that matters. A cup of coffee, a taco, whatever that is, God uses all that, amen? Uh, one of the areas, and, and if you noticed on the video there, uh, that some of the areas that God has us working in are areas that are really difficult areas. Like you saw Cuba. Cuba is a communist country. It's not open to the gospel. Uh, you saw uh, Ukraine. You'll hear more about that last week. And there's just, uh, it's, it's a difficult time right now. I mean, they're open to the gospel, but it's a difficult time. Uh, you saw Pakistan, uh, which is the second largest Muslim country in the world, which is pretty much anti-Christian. Uh, India, certainly. We'll see a video in a second. And Nepal. So it's just like God has relationally opened doors for this church to step into some of the most difficult countries in the world. Uh, one in particular we've been working for, with for a few years, and we needed to do a separate video because of the sensitivity of Christianity happening there and people serving the Lord. And it could really put them at great risk if it was on the archives, like it's gonna go back, you can go watch it over. You can't, you only get to see it now uh, for their safety and protection. Uh, because where we do work in India is the most difficult state in the whole entire country for persecution. Uh, they're regularly beaten, they're regularly put in jail, they're persecuted. In fact, we got a I got a WhatsApp the other day from uh, the president of IET, he and I are good friends, and he said that the anti-Christians stormed a Bible school and just tore down all the walls to it. And so they live that every day. So we have a separate video 
of an update, and even though there's heavy persecution, perhaps the most in India, is what I'm told, uh, the gospel is still doing amazing things, and you are supporting this movement among these people. So let's take a look. I love that. Hey, you know, you can't come and openly preach the gospel, but you can lay hands on the sick and see them recover, and then it preaches Jesus, doesn't it? And so it does it here too, and so I want to encourage you in that. So thank you for your giving, and you make that possible, and you were so generous with the missionary toolkits we did, 500 at the end of the year, et cetera. So, so many things, not enough time. We'd, we'd need a whole series just to give you the updates, and we'll try and do more. I just want to thank you uh, for what you're doing around the world, honestly, as God's brought us together to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And so you'll hear more next week, and we'll give a little bit more updates and in, in talking about where we're going to go the next step in different places here and around the world. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, but I do have a few things I want to share on my heart concerning uh, generosity because I want to make sure that we understand why we do what we do. Um, again, I, I'm always very sensitive, maybe overly sensitive to, to come across as just like somebody asking for money. All I'm doing is ask you to do what God's put in your heart to do. <laughs> but I know what God's putting in hearts in a sense, not amounts, but because I know who God is. And in reality, we are living our life as a reflection of God, or we are to be, right? How many in here believe God is a generous God? Yeah. Amen. Well, okay, maybe the rest of you will by the end of the message today. No. Uh, but here's what also what I believe. To the extent you believe in God's generosity is the extent that you'll walk in it yourself, because you will model what he does. Jesus, too, is our example. But in fact, if you look at the scripture, the greatest scripture most famous scripture in the history of the world of generosity is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he, and aren't you glad that God is a generous God because where would it be otherwise? And so I want to talk about that for a minute because I think this can be a game changer for us if we understand how generous God is. We need to learn the generosity of God, if you will, so therefore we'll line our life up with him. And more than anything, I want to make sure you understand the biblical foundation of living a generous life. And by the way, a generous life has nothing to do with your income. It was really quiet. I expected it to be that way. It was like, first, sir. Has nothing to do with your job. Has everything to do with your heart. And, it, and the way you think comes a lot of times reflected in our heart. And I want to address that this morning. So I actually, this is a great Sunday to have live notes. You can go to the app and get that. And I'll, I'll go through some of these quickly, but yet I want you to have them and you can go through the live notes again. Because again, I want, you, I want to lay a biblical foundation for us on the generosity of God because it has everything to do with how we think. And I'm going to give you a bunch of scriptures so you can hear it from him, not from me. Let's start here with Psalms 100, verse five. I'm going to do most of these out of the message paraphrase because I love the wording of the message paraphrase. So here we go. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and ever. Don't you like the wording of that? God is, is uh, generous in love. Our God is generous. Aren't you glad for the unconditional generous love of God? That marks who he is. Psalms 145, 16 uh, and through 21. Generous to a fault. You lavish your favor on all creatures. Everything God does is right. The trademark on all his works is love. God's there listening for all who pray, for all who pray and mean it. He does what's best for those who fear him, hears them call out and saves them. God sticks by all who love him, but it's all over for those who don't. Don't you love the wording? That's what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> uh, my mouth is filled with God's praise. Let everything living bless him. Bless his holy name now and for eternity. God is very generous to everyone. Romans 10, uh, 11 through 13, uh, scripture reassures us, no one who trusts God like this, heart and soul, will ever regret it. It's exactly the same, no matter what a person's religious background may be. It's the same God for all of us, acting the same incredibly generous way to everyone who calls out for help. Everyone who calls help God gets help. Now, understand what the scripture's talking about is, this is just the character of God, the nature of God. He's this way with everybody, not just people of faith. If someone is gonna call out for help, the generous God, because of his heart of love and generosity, he is gonna help them and rescue them. The nature and character of our God is generosity. Psalm 63, two through four says this. So here I am in this place of worship, eyes open, drinking in your strength and glory. In your generous love, I'm really living at last. My lips brim with praises like fountains. I bless you every time I take a breath. My arms wave like banners of praise 
to you. And what is praise and worship other than recognizing God's goodness and generosity towards us? And the psalmist here was praising and worshiping God because of his incredibly generous love, his nature, his character. Deuteronomy 15, 10 through 11. Give freely and spontaneously. Don't have a stingy heart. The way you handle matters like this, generously, freely, triggers God. You're God's blessing in everything you do, all your work and ventures. There are always going to be poor and needy among you, so I command you, always be generous, open purse and hands, give to your neighbors in trouble, your poor and your hurting neighbors. Amen, the character and nature of God. Living generously triggers God, I love that. And you see in here a couple of things about generosity, a generous mind thinking about ways to be generous and a generous heart wanting and desiring to help those in need. Isaiah 32, eight says this, but a generous man devises generous things and by generosity he shall stand. In other words, generous people, or people living a generous life are thinking of more ways to be generous, not less. More ways to expand their generosity, more ways, opportunities to be generous. People living a generous life, a generous man, they want to expand and exceed the gener- their previous generosity. And, and, and because it's because all the blessing in life, all the blessing in life comes from giving, comes from sharing, comes from adding value to others. It comes from serving. It comes from making a difference in other people's life. It's, it's who can I help? How can I help? When can I help someone else? It's in the scripture. It's important to understand that. 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19, message paraphrase, of course. Tell those rich in this world's wealth, let me stop for a second, because right there a lot of you just said, oh, okay, that's not me. (laughs) But understand the phrasing here, he's talking about rich in this world, because God has a heart for the world, going to all the world. So if you take the statistics today about wealth in the world, if you make $32,000 a year or more, you are among the 1% wealthy in the world. And for a lot of you, it's like, well, I'm still, that still doesn't, I'm like, you know, 24. Uh, I mean, can, I, can we just, if we were to go down to the 2% most wealthiest, 3%, can I say, wherever you're at today, you are, by virtue of being here and what you have, even though you may not see it or say, and in relation to the world, you're among the wealthiest in the world. So this scripture applies to everybody. Tell those rich in this world's wealth to quit being so full of themselves and obsessed with money. That's the word. Don't take it out on me. Which here today, (laughs) the messenger, uh, which is here today and gone tomorrow. Tell them to go after God. God who piles on all the riches we could ever manage to do good, to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous. If they do that, they'll build a treasury that will last, gaining life that is truly life. Life that is truly life comes from God, and it comes from a godly lifestyle, which is generosity. Now, understand something. I think it's important to say this as well, that we're not talking about giving to get. We're talking about giving to give. Amen? And I want to tell you, what does it look like to live generously? So what does that look like, Pastor? I hear you. We're not talking and teaching tithes and offerings. That's another one we'll do later in the year. It's important. We believe in that here. All that is important and necessary and part of God's plan for every believer and how he gets the gospel out around the world. But how do you live generously? Living generously means this, a few things I want to share with you right now. Uh, Number one, that you um, live on the other side of yes. I really learned this from my dad. My dad was that way. My dad was, he was, he, he wanted to look for ways to do it. He wanted to help no matter what. I learned that just growing up, just watching him. He didn't have to sit down and tell me this. I watched his lifestyle and I believe it is Christ-like. I believe it is God-like, if you will, or modeling after the things of God. I believe it's living on the other side of yes, and it's all about the way you think. So here's what it says in Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do your best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, Think of yes, not no. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you've learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that and God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Being on the other side of yes first. And God says it's all about how you think, right? So think good, think these things, think about these things. Don't look at necessarily the negative side first. You you need to process it through the the good that God has and can give. And so uh, what I wanna say is generosity is determined more about how you think about things 
perhaps than anything else. Because the word says, as a man, as a woman thinks in his or her heart, so is she. And so we don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. So we need to see ourselves more like Jesus, more Christ-like, more generous. And so a lot of people don't live on the other side of yes, they live on the other side of no. But the other side of yes, you see possibilities and potential. The other side of no, you see problems. The other side of yes, you see opportunity. The other side of no, you see obstacles and opposition. And I heard this said, and I love this, an individual talking to someone, they said this, I miss that, op- I miss that opportunity, it's lost. And the other individual said, don't worry, that opportunity is not lost, somebody found it, it's just not you. <laughs> and then he went on to say, that's why people on the other side of yes find themselves around people on the other side of no, because they find the missed opportunities. Years ago when my daughters were in their early teens, Callie and Camry, and Callie runs a coffee shop and Camry runs check-in at the kids. They're 24 and 23 now, but years ago, I can't even remember the situation that we were somewhere and talking about something we can do. It was kind of like an obstacle. We didn't know if we could do this or not. And my oldest daughter, Callie, spoke up and looked at me and said, Dad, we're Duncans, not Duncans. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, that's right. Man, out of the mouth of kids, right? The faith of our kids. And that stuck with me. I, Think about that all the time. That was generosity. Live on the other side of yes. Living generously means that we continually sow seed. We continually sow seed. A generous person is a seed sower. And if you understand the principles of generosity, you evaluate life by the seeds you sow, not by the harvest you reap. And most people evaluate everything by the harvest they reap. That's how we're trained in this world's mindset, this world's system. What's in it for me? What am I, I going to get out of this? But understand, again, there's a spiritual law and natural law at work. If I just sow seeds every day, just a little something every single day, I, I add value to somebody, I, I give generously, I live generously, I help people, I, I make a difference, I serve. If I do that every single day, the law is harvest will come. The truth is there's a whole bunch of people that never sowed seed and they're going out looking for a harvest. It's a spiritual, natural law. And we're talking about living a generous lifestyle, not a trade-off, not a negotiation, just sowing seed. Somebody said this one time, I love it. The soil says, bring me your seed, not bring me your need. What a revelation that is because we wanna walk out with our need And the soul says, I can't do anything with your need, but if you bring me some seed, I can produce. A generous life is one who sows seed. Look at what what Jesus said, Luke 6, 38. Give away your life, you'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. Those are the words of Jesus My wife is one of the most generous people I know, and we live by this, that if we want to increase our standard of living, we need to increase our standard of giving. We set giving goals, and then we look for the opportunity in the moment, and we see the benefit of it. We reap the benefit of it. The challenge in this world is that it doesn't make sense, this whole system that God set up doesn't make sense because this world is about self, but God's about others. And so we, we try, but sometimes it's hard to understand it. I don't understand exactly how this works. And I want to say this this morning, you don't have to understand it. You just have to do it. Because most people are already educated way beyond their level of obedience. <laughs> you don't need to understand it. You just need to understand God. And we've already established in many scriptures that what you need to understand is God's a generous God. That's enough for me then I'm gonna live a generous life because I understand his character and his nature. Living generously means we're growing in our faith. You wanna grow beyond where you are in your faith and you wanna increase your faith, increase your generosity. That'll increase your faith, right? There's a spiritual principle attached to it. Some of us are stuck and stagnant in our faith because we're stuck and stagnant in our generosity. But God connected those two. Second Peter 1, five through nine says this, so don't lose a minute in building on what you've been given, complimenting your basic faith with good character. 
spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passionate patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness, generous love, each dimension fitting into and developing the others. With these qualities active and growing in your lives, no grass will grow under your feet. No day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience of our master Jesus. With these qualities, you can see what's right before you. You can't see what's right before you. He's talking about when you apply generosity to your life, all these things grow. Your faith grows. Your spiritual character grows. We live generously, and living generously means we attract people to God. Do you realize it's generosity of your life that is a witness and testimony to people about your God? That's why God is so insistent on you living a generous life, and then he obligates himself to that because he wants everybody to know he's a generous, loving God because it attracts people. It might just be what attracted you to the gospel, but we attract people to God. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says this. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm gonna hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. You know, yesterday morning, as we, I, I would invite everybody out to prayer on Saturday mornings. We had a powerful time of prayer. We were praying about today, knowing the topic was generosity. And one moment, at some point in the prayer time, my mom, as she tends most of the time to prayer, she began to just pray about generosity, but here's what came out of her spirit as she was praying. She said, Lord, help us be generous with kindness. Let us be kind to everybody, no matter who they are, what they look like, where they come from, what they believe. She, she prayed, Lord, let us be generous with our words. Let us use our words to build people up and not to tear down. Let us, our words be like medicine to people's soul. Let us be encouragers. Lord, let us, let us be generous with our forgiveness. Freely may we forgive as we've been freely forgiven from you, Father God, by you, Father God. Let us be quick to forgive. Father, let us be generous with our love, love unconditionally. We love everyone, no matter what they look like, what they're going through. It doesn't matter their color. It doesn't matter the money they make, their age. Let us love unconditionally like you love, like you love us. Let us be generous with our peace. Be peacemakers. Come into situations and storms and bring peace into the moment. Let us be generous with our faith because so many people are in need. Let us stand with them in their time of need and say, I'm going to join my faith with yours. I'm going to believe God on your behalf. Lord, let us be generous with grace. How we treat other people. So this was amazing to me. This is like, this is generosity. Your life, a generous life, and all these things are so much more just in the everyday life you live, in your home, in your work, in your school, wherever you go. If you'll just be generous with these things, people will want to know your God. When you live a generous life, people want to know your God. When you help people, they want to know your God. And that's what we see, and that's what you saw in India. Everywhere around the world and here through food distributions and Night to Shine, all those opportunities, people get to know our God because of our love. Whether it's somewhere around the world in a closed country or whether it's right here in our backyard at a food distribution or a Night to Shine. When you're stingy and you don't do those things, people don't want to know about your God. In fact, they really don't even want to know about you. <laughs> now we do that, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Every day living a generous life will make people hungry for God. Living generously means we receive more than we ever could imagine. Proverbs 11, 24 through 25 says this. The world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed, and those who help others are helped. The question is, do you want your life to get larger or smaller? It's your choice. Generosity is a choice. And let me say this here. I've already said it. This is not a give to get thing. This is just the result of. This is the promises of God. Do you want to be blessed? Do you want to be helped? And let me be clear here again. We're, we're not negotiating with God or trying to manipulate God. That's just the promise of the Father through those who are generous. If you live a generous life, 
you don't keep score. You live to give because there's a divine exchange that happens. Living generously, last one, means this. We live out our God-created identity. You know, people say all the time, I, I want to I be Christ-like. How do I be more like Jesus? How do, how do we be more like God? I want to be more like God. Then I would say, if you want to be more like God, be generous. You want to be more like Jesus? You want to be more Christ-like? Be generous. And Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 48, These are Jesus' words. In a word, what I'm saying is, grow up. Jesus said that. You're kingdom subjects. Now live like it. Live out of your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously towards others the way God lives towards you. Don didn't say that. Jesus said that. You were created with a God-like identity, meaning you were created then to be generous because we already, all of us raised our hand already about, we all know God's a generous God. We know that, I don't know why I'm here on the earth to be generous. I don't know the plan God has for my life to be generous. I, I, don't, I, I don't know how to make a difference. Be generous. I don't know how to reflect Jesus. Be generous. I don't know how to point people to God. Be generous. And we already established, I'm not just talking about your mind, and kindness in words. Be generous is who you were created to be by God. Christ-like, God-created identity. Jesus said, if you wanna live out your God-created identity, live generously and graciously towards others. And here's what I see when I look out across this church. I see a church full of generous people. Wow, we're a blessed. Thank you so much for your generosity. Full of people who wanna give generously of everything they are. People who want to live out their God-created identity. I, I look out across this place and I see God-created identity all over the place. And I love that. And in light of what I shared last week, if you were here, you'll understand if you weren't. You can go back and watch or listen. But we talked about how the owner of the garden looked at the fig tree that wasn't producing. And then the gardener being Jesus in the parable said, give me one more year. I'll work with them. I'll break up the ground around their heart and then I'll pour in what they need for life. And I would say this this morning, give one more year. Make this the most generous year you've ever had before and see what God does. Let's see this year if we can live our most generous life and see what our generous God does and result to that. Let this year mark our lives with generosity like no other year before us and see all that God will produce in and through us because he's a good and faithful God and he's a generous God. Amen. Thanks again for joining us this week. We pray that this message encouraged and inspired you. If you want to find out how you can be a part of Tree of Life, just go to our website, treeoflifechurch.org. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and share it with a friend.